thinking is the capital enterprise is the way hard work is the solution a very good afternoon all of you i am atira universal engineering college valivattam invites you to the international webinar series on future technologies opportunities and challenges after covid 19 thank you all for joining us for today's webinar today we are going to present the topic data and analytics the presenter of the topic will be mr jin matthew He is a hands-on and highly experienced technology executive with over 20 years of successful enterprise-level accomplishments with a passion to drive customer engagement to successful outcomes from concept to contract to execution. Through the course of his career, Mr. Jin Matthew has led transformational initiatives for clients in areas such as application development and maintenance, business process outsourcing, offshoring, engineering services, and incubating latest technology units for enterprises. After having worked with multiple Fortune 500 clients in multiple capacities and locations, Mr. Jin now leads the consulting organization at New Desic Global Services in India. In this role he is responsible for the P&L project delivery existing and new business solutions consulting staff and their development prior to this jan was jin was leading the business development and solutions team of digital enterprise unit at TCS one of the fastest growing and leading unit which sets direction in digital technologies like mobility big data cloud social media artificial intelligence and robotics He was responsible for engaging the customers on digital reimagination and enabling them to digitally reimagine their business model and processes, products and services, customer segments, channels, workplaces, and enterprise experience through design making. Mr. Jin and his team was responsible for driving strategic digital initiatives. Key industry partnerships and relationships with clients and account executives. In the past, Mr. Jin has experience of diverse roles, varying from business development manager, portfolio director, account manager, program manager, business analyst, and programmer for large BFSI customers of TCS. Now, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel, or you have the option of raise hand in control panel for asking your doubts. And please remind that we will also have time for questions at the end. Now, uh, we will turn the time over to respected principal, Dr. Josh K. Jacob. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, Adira. Uh, once again, uh, welcome to Universal you know, Engineering College, all of you. so uh, i'm sure that uh, today's webinar uh, in the in today's webinar it will be highly informative because from the introduction itself you know the capacity of uh, mr jin matthew so i hope definitely you'll get the informations and all faculty members in uh, those who are attending this uh, program will transfer the knowledge to your students and wish you all success and i'm handing over the mic to mr jin matthew sir please please proceed right um i hope i can uh, you can you can hear me okay yeah we can hear you all right, hear. okay all right um first of all thank you very much uh, universal college uh, for arranging this kind of sessions transformation um, and also the, the 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 role of data in transformation digital transformation in enterprises so um, i'm going to switch off my mic i'm going to move back into my presentation um so i'll just uh, move into that so you can
All right. Okay. So um, uh, from from a from a data perspective, right? Um, we are we are going to talk more about data and analytics, uh, but there is some history, um, historical uh, things about data. And today, if you really look at it, all kind of businesses are actually making um, decisions um, by analyzing their data, understanding their data. Uh, most of their business decisions, their futuristic aspects are being taken based on uh, on, on, on the data. So um, just let us go into a bit of what is this data, right? It is um, mankind or even human, uh, mankind has evolved with a lot of knowledge um, as well as the, the data which has been passed over uh, from our ancestors, right? That is the way we have actually been evolved into the current state. It is actually a better state for than um, previous generations and we are actually uh, kicking and thriving um, very well uh, with, with, the, with the current scheme of things. Obviously, this pandemic is actually taking us a little bit back, uh, taking it, pushing us a little bit back, but um, um, at least for the current state of affairs, we are actually in a better position than anybody just because of uh, all kind of data or the knowledge which has been passed over to us, right? When you, when you look at it at a little bit more of a technical sense of data, what is this data, right? It is data is having, um, it, is, it is having some values, it has, qualitative information or even quantitative information um, in, in the data, right? And you can actually start looking at data in, in different dimensions, like it has a time uh, associated with it, it has some kind of an attributes like a place or an object or a, um, or a person or anything of that sort, right? That is what uh, data is all about. And um, in over, in the 1900s, um, everybody, though it was in the in the in kind of previous generation, data was actually being stored properly in a in a paper or in a leaves or anything of that sort, and this move on, right? And in 1900, we started uh, associating data with information uh, technology, right? It can be transmitted, it can be stored over um, or computers and those kind of things, right? That is what um, the data definition. I'm just setting a context here, just so that you understand where uh, we will go um, and about the session, right? And uh, moving on, um, if you really look at it from our um, economic perspective, right? Uh, again, mankind, from our, the knowledge which we have, we have different kind of economical transformations happen to us um, over, the, over the period. So we have evolved, we had the, 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 the knowledge goes back, we did have something called an agriculture economy, which is took close to hundreds of years to spread across the world, right? Then after that, it has started moving into an industrial economy. And in an industrial economy, we started moving into mechanizations, mechanical, um, uh, mechanical stuff, and the manufacturing has become the core of it. Though we have not discarded agriculture economy, it was, um, it was still there uh, because it was the one who just actually be providing the food for the generation, right? It is agriculture economy existed, but industrial economy came in with manufacturing as a core team, right? And then the repetitive things happened, companies started coming in, they, that has become the economic and norms. So if you really look at it from the, um, from somewhere around uh, 60s, 70s, uh, 70s, it is again started with a knowledge economy. So um, Humor had the power of good knowledge, right? And also who had the research power, they all started coming uh, up and with products and services, which is enabled uh, a skilled economy. So it's something like a really skilled um, knowledge economy started uh, evolved. And in 80s and 90s, um, the, the real uh, internet economy or the dot-com economy started coming in because from the knowledge we had, the businesses we were doing, it has started into more of a digital form, though it is, in a, it is not very effectively done, but it is, it is done with, a, uh, with an internet in mind, right? We can actually digitize whatever the knowledge we have, and then we move into that.
uh, in many of the uh, many of the existing industries and we can we we are actually started looking at how this can actually enable more right so digital products and services started coming in so if somebody who is not digitally enabled we have seen that in 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 the last decade or so we have started seeing that some com if the companies or enterprises which is not able to cop up with the digital uh, consumer economy right if i'm not able to do the digital um, services they are going out of business right several companies there are several n number of cases are there which is taken over by the digital natives or the digital companies or and that is it is definitely it is driven by the consumers so the digital consumer economy is the theme which is today it is driving and if you if you look at it from a digital consumer perspective right what is this digital consumer economy is driven out of there is two main digital forces which is enabling this economy to thrive um and there are other technologies like machine learning ai based uh, and even robotics all these things are coming up but everything if you really look at it this is the core forces behind this digital technologies or digital economy is two things the mobility and the cloud and this is all if you it, it's all evolved in the last 10 to 12 years and into a very very mature state states and it is it is thriving it so smart mobiles definitely has liberated uh, humanity from tying up to to desktop computers to to anything right it is like giving you anything anywhere information right and apple has spoiled us with the experience the the experience of a consumer or a customer has literally been um uh, spoiled by apple it is not even it's spoiled i i i would rather say it is not really spoiled but it is the, the amazing experiences the simplification it has done right there is a lot of complex things happens in a mobile phone or right but with a gesture with a with a touch you are able to do a lot of stuff with the mobile mobile right so then uh, in the last 10 years we have seen the cloud um, is coming up because if a mobile enabled economy needs to work you need something to process data something to process the information and provide it back to your edge or the 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 the, the way we call it as the edge it is the, the mobile is also an edge which which is the end point where you actually get the information right so the the liberation happened for and the experiences are changing yesterday i believe yesterday or day for yesterday you had the session on user experience so that is a core theme which is they actually look at it how i can enhance the experience right it is if if a customer is coming to one enterprise app and if he is not finding it the right things at the right way he wanted he will just leave and he go to another competitor so that is the competition happening in the digital world so the cloud the way cloud is actually uh, been enabling it is today it is like it is democratized the computing power it is also democratized the data storage power right you don't have to depend on a costly computer for doing some activities so it is it is making the world very flat today if you because previously what happened is there is a lot of data servers you need a lot of high if a knowledge economy has to thrive right it is in that scenario you you needed a lot of big machines to store and uh, process the data and it is it, computing is not cheap so computing power or the computing is not cheap but cloud today is actually enabling you to democratize it you can actually use it the way you want it the how much power you wanted the when you want it right you just have to log in and you are able to spin off machines and the power and even it is it is today it is like it is two things are separate your storage is separate your computing is separate i can spin off a machine with high power for processing my uh, christmas sale 
right? So if it's a Christmas sale is happening just for that uh, five days or six days, I can actually bring up a, a high fast environment um, and then bring it down. So I just only pay for my usage. So one of the things you all should look, look at it is cloud is becoming, if you're if, if in the IT world or anywhere, and anywhere, right? Cloud is becoming the norm, which is also enabling, uh, um, there, there are technologies like, I, I'm not going to go a little bit deeper into it, but it is, it's like, um, development and operations, right? It is cloud is actually enabling um, customers to, to to literally produce something, right? And put it into the market and also to change it as and when it required. See, I, I'm in the industry for the last 20, 22 years. We used to develop something. It takes at least two years to three years to come out of a project. Today, it is not, right? So the, the agility, it is the cloud is enabling you to do something is, is much more today, right? It is because if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you know Amazon runs uh, 11 million pricing calculations every day, they changes the prices depending upon the demand. It is possible only because of uh, the, the power behind the cloud. Right? And it is enabling each and everybody, right? It is, it is not only for US, somebody sitting in US, somebody sitting in uh, UK or in somebody sitting in Australia. It is, it is available to anybody in the world. So that democratization is changing. So this is, this is the major two things which is um, liberating um, peoples and also they're enhancing the experience as well as um, giving their chances for anybody to come out into the market and knock off any big guys. Right? So if somebody is not getting enabled with this, they will be knocked off. So, so the, the experiences are, so the, one, of the, one of the problems is that if you, if you really look at it, um, I'm, I'm sure it's, you're all in social media, you're all in any, uh, all these kind of digital enabled platforms, right? there is information overload that means it is data it is information overload data overload happens to each of us right there is also syndromes uh, started coming in it's called fomo right fear of missing out if i don't do this should i uh, will i miss out or is it is it something like that right so we are all fearing because of the information overload overloads we see that this kind of syndromes are also coming in, right? So uh, what is possible, that is, if, if you, again, the, the thing is, if I'm coming out with the product, right, today, if I'm coming out with the product, there is an expectation from you or as a consumer that there is a digital twin is uh, enabled. When I talk about digital twin, I was setting up my Wi-Fi um, recently. I was setting up my, uh, mesh network at home because of the high fast, yeah, the, the, the high speed network I wanted. So I was just setting it up. I realized that um, there is a, I, it's just a matter of legging this stuff, right? Um, there's a dongle kind of stuff it came in. I just put it into the network, right? Then I had to download an app. The moment I started downloading an app, it is actually opened up and started showing me the exact replica of the physical device and I have to touch uh, with a couple of touches right I have connected and it is already been authenticated I can actually do anything and then I had to extend my Wi-Fi router to another room and things like that I have the similar kind of a device I just put it out there plug it in then automatically this mobile started showing me the same thing right so it is, it is an expectation, the is is experience is such a way that there is an expectation getting built that, okay, if I'm getting something, there is an enabled digital tin for me to ease of set it up, that's it. So the, the world is moving in that line, right? So um, uh, that also brings in, I just wanted to move on to the next slide, why it is, uh, relevant, right? It is a, we we all agree that okay, we are actually living in a in a very very better world than the previous generations. 
but when you when you look at it any organization right it is any organization uh, or even for a human mankind right everyone agree that okay we all are ambitious we all wanted to be looking for progress so that is the same scenario in in the business world so there is uh, there is an expectation uh, of businesses to grow so what happened is over this last 5 6 years people were not or the industries were not growing as expected so the digital technologies actually been started enabling enterprises to relook at their products and services right so we were already in a cost reduction phase right competitions are actually been kicking in and constrained revenue so that is where the problem this thing was now with digital technologies what is happening is that it is actually enabling you right so um, you have you have already started seeing right it is already there you are already experiencing it if if somebody is not giving you this experience and the technology enablement right you actually move into somebody else so that is the competition so this is the the, the technology is actually enabling more headroom right for for any companies so anybody it is it is that again historically i was saying it, it is already been proven that somebody who is enabled in with digital technology and you take um, um fortune 500 fortune 100 companies at least 9 out of 10 companies are tech companies right they are the ones who are actually driving this economy forward and if the other enterprises or consumers are not going to catch up with it they will be out of business right so what is happening is that it is uh, i'm sure it is uh, uh, we all um, we, we all call amazon as a, um, as a as a big retailer right um, but uh, are they really a retailer company they are a data company right they provide you uh, retail information they, they they enable you to shop right they actually store all these kind of data they understand your behavior they are as good as google or an apple which who understands you better than yourself right how are they understanding they will actually give you a, a satisfaction or they will even remember your uh, life events and pop it up and show you 10 years back okay you were here right it is uh, so you get that experience so, so people are um, people, everybody in today you all wanted that right so amazon google or even um, uh, apple right they know much better um, your behavior than yourself right so that is where and how is it been done it is literally with data right so what and today that's what so amazon has kicked off uh, right knocked off a lot of retailers out right they are blurring it they are a technology company they they are a big cloud provider right they are a big content provider right they are knocking off they are knocking off industries so there is a big um, scenario of blurring of this because in 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 probably 20 years back we used to tell that okay i i provide telecom services i provide banking services i provide entertainment services that's it that is the boundaries were set today this technologies and the transformation which is enabled enabling everybody to look at it okay can i go extend my business boundaryless right it is becoming boundaryless business now and this is the same scenario in it and anywhere right it is like there is an expectation that okay if if you are a if you are a programmer you are not going to survive right you have to be at least a full stack guy who understands uh, a bit more you understand cloud you, you understand programming languages you understand design so that is what the world is evolving into right. so um, just to just to, that comes in um, into a digital uh, a, a view of digital transformation right what exactly happens in the world uh, for any enterprises right if it's what is that we do um, from an it standpoint i i will talk more into an it standpoint because that is my bread and butter 
this is what I sell and uh, discuss with our customers, right? And just any enterprises to look at it digitally transformative, like uh, Google, like, uh, like, an, uh, like an Amazon, right? Everybody, every industry has to look at it, um, this kind of layers, right? So what is the basic layer they should be looking at? There are, this is a very simplified view. There are different architectural patterns, different things uh, exist in the IT world. But just to give you a perspective, right? Infrastructure, because infrastructure is the key, infrastructure or the servers or the computing power and everything, that is the key for you to uh, start looking at digital transformation because which is many way, many companies are already there in one way or the other. But cloud is allowing them um, massively to bring up infrastructure in a, in a click of a second. Right. Then infrastructure and data is very, very critical for any enterprises to look at it, digital transformation. Without data, without infrastructure, they are not having any value. So the, 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 the bottom line is that infrastructure and data layer is the key for any, any companies. They have to collect data. They might be having data in different, different places, but without data, they are not going to do anything. Then there is a processing layer, which is what it will enable that data to get processed, right, in a consumable fashion, and which can go into an experience layer, which I think you already had some sessions on, uh, on, on your, uh, how the experience of presentations are, right? Experience layer, which is called experience layer, which is how a consumer consumes that data um, rightfully so that there is right decisions being made or right outputs are being generated, right? So this is a cycle. If you really look at it, uh, n number of data sources, you all comes from, right? And that get fed into this kind of layers, then it is processed and the experiences are actually being um, given, right? So um, there are architecture patterns like microservices patterns and different kind of things exist in a uh, in in the IT world. Um, in the microservices is not, because in 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 probably twenty years back when we look at it, all these things were merged. There is everything was monolithic applications. Every layer was actually been very very tightly coupled. But today, what we're trying to do is we are we are actually making it decouple it so that you can plug and play any layer whichever you want it. So today, I, uh, many of the enterprises has a problem is, okay, I may be in Oracle database, I may be in, in Amazon cloud, or I may be in Blue cloud kind of scenario. So it is, uh, many enterprises has realized that, okay, tying up uh, this into, um, into one particular thing is going to take a long time for them to transform. Right, so to bring in more agility, bring in more structure so that they can plug and play. So that is why this kind of layers are uh, actually coming in in enterprises today, right? So the, if, you, if, you, if you want to know more of microservices is something like a, a service, which is if, if you take a, a vertical slicing of this one small piece of it, that you can consider that as a microservice, which has a, micro front end, it has a processing, micro microprocessing, it also has a, a small bit of storage, a micro, micro data management layer. So that is the microservices architecture, which is also coming up in the industry today, because you will, um, you will not want to, uh, every, everybody to do everything um, repeatedly. So you will create, okay, if you want to bring in an e-signature for uh, a, in your platform, or you wanted to bring in a document management in your platform, right? You will bring in a small microservice with all these elements and then crisscross start using it. So that is what digital transformation, uh, every company today that is, we do a lot of work on it and um, everywhere you have opportunities. If you really look at it, there is infrastructure, data, processing, right? Experience, everywhere there are um, opportunities exist uh, in the world um, out there. Um, so what happens in, in many of the organizations, right? It's, uh, I, I'm just going back in here itself. Many organizations, when you go back, right? It is uh, when we started discussing, 
there is there is different kind of organization that exists in the industry today uh, it is like very very uh, transformative companies right there are disruptors they come with new products and disrupt the market there are transformative companies who actually look at it okay how can i adapt into this uh, kind of a layer right and then there is somebody who accepts and they wanted to move in they are not able to move in but there are other companies which is denying it telling that okay no i am not going to move into this uh, so uh, this, this is these are the different layers or the different kind of companies which we see in the market so somebody who is denying somebody who is just accepting and not doing anything they will be knocked off and they will go on they, right the rest of the layer, less of the companies will move on so what is this analytics or what kind of a, um, things which is happens in the in the data world right it is so if you really look up look at it right how are we moving into um, uh, you, you might you might have heard or you uh, traditionally there are systems existed in the computing world called mis right management information systems uh, which used to collect data see uh, we have to, you have to you all have to agree that we all have to agree that okay 90 percent of the data which is generated in the world today it has happened only in the last 10 years and so people were not storing much of a data only very very crisp and informations were being stored and that was being used and so in the data analytics world these are the different stages which you will see right? so um, every company were looking at data on a retrospective way so once it is happened right what happened so um, you collect the data you process it and then you come out with some decisions after an event has happened so that is way that is the way business decisions were being taken so if if uh, if if my sales has gone down in one month right i take a decision for that month uh, sales dip after two months because that is the time this data is got processed and uh, consumed and went into the senior management layer layer saying that okay last month last last month we had a dip right in this particular region this particular areas and things like that so there are they they were they were collecting those kind of information and that is what so it is a, it was a very very reactive decision making right and then the, you understand right okay why did it happen it is you will start looking at diagnostics of it the, by the time you actually bring it up right it is that event is over uh, everybody has moved on right but uh, enterprises are making a decision only after two or three months so it, this is also we call it that hindsight right hindsight decision making then we uh, with with the advent of new kind of this, this this technology which is coming in right and also the data which is actually being generated today it is there's a huge amount of variety of data which is coming in because of a lot of touch points for any consumer or a customer right so uh, different sources like social media is one thing um, your 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 usage patterns are different your transactions are different everything if you really look at it your variety and the velocity at which the data which is coming in into into anywhere right into, into the world itself is is huge so that is where we started calling them as big data so today the term of big data is gone it is only earlier data so it is that is because people have accepted that okay it is big data everything is big today so you need you need a big amount of processing capability you need big amount of storage capability to consume all those data just store all the data process it and then consume it so that is where i was telling is the, the 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 cloud technologies are actually been enabling right if you really look at it so what it is enabling all these kind of new data sources is enabling you to start your uh, prediction well so you are looking at only your old data or your this uh, past data but you are able to better predict now with with more and more information it is not that okay there is there was people were not thinking about predictive analytics 
or how can I predict my sales for the next two quarters or three quarters, right? So it was it was not that okay, people were not intelligent. We had uh, thought process, we had algorithms, we had all kind of inventions, but the computing power and the storage power of the data, which was limiting. The more and more you have uh, the data, the more uh, data you have, your prediction model will be much, 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 much more accurate. Right? So that is why the new stream of predictive analytics right? and a stream of prescriptive analytics coming. Right? So you have started giving more insight. So I can actually now look at it, my data in a very, very real time fashion. Okay, if a sale dip is happening in one place, I will be able to understand right, why it is happening. So, um, why it is happening very very quickly itself because I can merge my uh, foot footfall data, which is and also the my consumer data. I can actually merge it. I can I can even look at it my weather data, right? The weather there is a weather information which is actually creating um, a sales tip, right? Or is there a is there a pandemic situation or is there a, a, a crop situation there is, is there any kind of a if i'm if i'm in a food processing industry am i going to have a problem or because of something some kind of a famine happening in africa it may be something happening in asia right so if i'm all these things i'm able to collect it today and i'm able to start better predicting Right, I'm able to bring in analytics or insights into with my data. So, so this is uh, this is this also moves into a bit of a prescriptive analytics. So I'm sure you are all um, shopping in Amazon, shopping in Flipkart, and uh, right, and even watching a lot of things in your uh, in, in in the contents from Netflix or Amazon Primes and everything. Right, it is so. Um, so this, the prescriptive analytics is what you see in, in many of those, tech, those platforms. It actually started, it actually start understanding your behavior. It actually start giving you recommendations, right? Recommendations on what you should watch, right? What you should buy, what combination you should buy, right? And like your behavior, it is also trying to give you, uh, okay, the people like you, or it is trying letting you, it has actually started you to segment you into a, a stream or some kind of a combination of people, telling that people like you also bought this, right? So this is this is a, a, an example of prescriptive analytics, right? So what happens in a even in a in a, in a, in a in a in a in the industry is that um, this is. Uh, making it, um, ma making it into into your nerves sometimes, right? I'll, I'll talk about a bit on your privacy and uh, data security elements a bit, but um, the the youth or the the culture is changing in such a way that uh, the consumers wanted that. Consumers is looking for recommendations, right? So, consumer wanted to see that. Okay, what is it? What is the review? How is it? And everything of that sort, right? So, so the, 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 the more the things which we do, right, it is, this is what it is going to happen. And this is expected out of every enterprise. It is not just for Amazon or, and, uh, or, or Netflix or anywhere. You expect that to happen from your Kirana store, right? Or the store near to you, right? So that is what the expectation which is driving this digital economy forward. So um, on a, just to give you a perspective of prescriptive analytics, right? It is, it is not that it is, it is just happening. This is, uh, I have a, uh, I'm not too sure how many of you know the Target, the great Target story. Uh, Target is a big retailer in US. Um, they actually was, uh, their marketing team was sending um, pregnancy related things, um, uh, pregnancy related, related marketing materials to a teenager in her email, right? So um, the dad uh, one day looked at her email and then uh, found that, okay, she's getting this pregnancy related stuff, right? So uh, then uh, he got wild, 
So he went to the target store manager, who was a local store manager, and asked, okay, why are you sending this kind of things to my, uh, my daughter? Right? So this guy didn't have any clue. The, uh, the store manager didn't have any clue because this is being processed by somebody else, some, some other central processing unit who actually uh, target customers to, to, to with promotions, right? So um, this dad, he, this, the store manager apologized and then this dad went back, right? The dad came back after, a mo after, a, after a two weeks back and then apologized to, uh, to the store manager telling that, sorry, I didn't know what was happening at home my daughter is pregnant, right? So how did Target find out this girl was pregnant? It, it is purely based on the data. When you're pregnant, you actually go buy some specific stuff, right? You may buy cocoa butter, you may buy folic acid, right? So these kind of behaviors which you exhibit in a retail scenario, right? they picked up and they segmented that okay this is a this is the the pregnancy related group they segment that and then they send out the uh, marketing materials so that is what the data can actually do so the dimensions of data the attributes of data is increasing today right i can do slicing and dicing of data in whichever fashion i want i can i can segment uh, by understanding my uh, purchase patterns, right? Um, the way you are actually behaving in um, social media, the way you clicking on um, your Netflix uh, screens, right? Uh, any touch point you do make, right? Any anywhere you're clicking, right? It is actually generating data. And if you don't know, Netflix stores every click you do, right? Whether you are clicking right, whether you are clicking left where you can clicking down, right? Everything is actually being stored. So um, the, the, you can actually, the, the enterprises or the, customer, the companies can actually do whatever it wanted they, with the data, right? How can, so, and even that's what they, they will make it happen. It is in such a way that how can we make it happen, right? It is push, push you into such a way that it is okay. It is I. You are forced to buy something. That is the scenario which is actually coming in. So that means it is you are actually going from an information to an optimization level and making your data more and more intelligent, right? And this is not being done by just by uh, human beings, right? It is being done by different models. So. Um, when it comes into, I'll talk about a bit, um, so different models, and that is where your machine learning comes in, that is where our artificial intelligence related things comes in. Right? It is going into that kind of an optimization level. So what does it mean, right? It is, that means the data or analytics is actually being segmented into traditional BI, business intelligence, traditional business intelligence, then moving into advanced analytics. Right. So this is where Ender uh, uh, world is moving to. So what is involved in an analytical process, right? It is uh, uh, just to give you a perspective, right? Uh, so you can, we can all talk about, okay, I do have an aspiration to be a digitally transformative company. I can, uh, or, uh, or I wanted to do uh, answer all kind of my questions, right? So Today, how this has been done is with you, every enterprise is grappling out with some kind of a business problem. They have to identify a business problem and they have to start, many of enterprises has a lot of data, which is in sitting in different, different places, right? And they are trying to, they have to identify some kind of a data sources. Then from there, they have to start selecting. It is not that okay, it is easy that okay, Google is actually giving you recommendation just like that. It is not. It is they are processing it very wisely, right? What it is, it is it's cleaning it properly. They are actually cleaning all your data. You can actually put across all kind of junk in it, right? There is only junk will come out. So what happens is there is a lot of selection of the data happens, there is a lot of cleaning happen, transformation happens. 
okay so and then uh, models are actually being applied models in the sense there are statistical models there are statistical models like uh, um, linear regression there is uh, the, all this kind of it is all existed in the world right but the, the 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 computing and the storage of data is actually enabling it right there are regression models there are propensity models there are deep learning and neural networks models which is all been applied in this to that this kind of data and that is where the real output is going to come out right and that is where the the the, the roles of a data analyst and then the business which will take this out data and make the decisions out of it so this is the steps involved in an analytical process or the how to how to get an analytics out of um, out of your data right so this is so where are we moving into is so you are actually start what will happen is you start asking more and more questions right and the more and more outputs right it is we are moving into a place where analytics everywhere is is actually the norm analytics everywhere is going to be the norm for every company and they have to do it and they have to do it very quickly right so they will ask questions like what are we people talking about my product right I, why my customer is actually going away right so uh, if, if you really look at it from a Vodafone standpoint or an Airtel standpoint or BSNL standpoint right I can understand each and every uh, call drops happening right I can understand um, the people uh, complaints right if I start merging the, the different kind of data sources right then you will give uh, you will get a get to know that okay whether this customer he is a high valued customer for me is he going to go away uh, from me right they are able to predict okay this guy is going to go so let me offer something uh, some offer right it is i'll give you a 200 rupees package or 500 rupees package to you right because you will stick with me right and even it is um, if, you, if you really do if you know house of cards is one of the, the famous series in netflix which is literally being created right based on customer behaviors they literally been created for customer behaviors so um, i'm not too sure how many of you know money haste right money haste is one of the leading um, uh, netflix series recently right it is in 2016 it was a failed series in spain it has not made money in 2016 right but when netflix picked it up and they started produce uh, transmitting across the world right it has become a super hit and they produced the season two on the similar theme and that also big uh, on went uh, really on a hit right it is it is a super hit today in netflix and they made millions of dollars out of it so so this is what uh, the analytics and the data can do right they can actually you, you unleash different insight right and you can start asking more questions so there is technologies today it is it is not that okay you need to do everything today it is there are technologies which is allowing you to just start a start typing this query right what people are saying about my particular product then it will actually get, list you down everything so the technologies is already there which is enabling you to just ask questions i think it is um, uh, even in your user experience you might have heard it like something like okay people can i, I can just ask questions right uh, in google today i can just um, just a voice command if you just ask questions you will get the first results the same thing is happening in the data world you just ask questions the insights is going to come out from it is enabled through this technologies right so predictability will be the standard going forward um, at least for the years to come at least the next 10 years to come right it is so gardner is one of the leading research um, organization who produces who research and across all kind of technologies all kind of organizations all kind of industries right so their prediction and even everything it is even that is what it's happening every company right will look at initiatives and uh, which is linked to financial objectives right 
and they will increase their financial investments in advanced analytics right and uh, they will bring out insights and they will bring out um, literally analytic centers of excellent right so with processing exogenous uh, data it is not that okay one set of data it is like a variety of data they will process right and then they are going to come out so just to give you a perspective on again see this is the this is again it is from idc it is another research firm right you are going to 49 percent of data will be stored in public cloud going by 2025 right and it will be nearly right 30 percentage will be consumed real time so i will be able to generate this data the enterprises will be able to consume it uh, very very quickly i will be able to understand um, my uh, my sales right it is if i am able to um, increase my sales or if I, if something is going out of stock right i will be able to e easily replenish it very very quickly so um, that is the real time intelligence which is actually being generated uh, using these technologies and the data it is generated right and what is going to happen it's already if you really look at the mobile phones and everything is actually having much more computing power uh, than a laptop in five years back right it is um, already you're already equating your laptops with a mobile phone you can actually do that so it is the edge computing is actually going to grow and it is because the moment it happens itself there your model will run and give you an experience there in itself right so it is iot is going to create a, a lot of things in the manufacturing segment so the manufacturing is already it is manufacturing is actually evolving you are actually already seeing about uh, on hearing about tesla and then um, all kind of electric vehicles which is going to come autonomous things is going to happen right the experience it is even the maintenance or any kind of uh, things which is going to happen in a in a vehicle it is all being tracked controlled and uh, alerted right? iot is going to be play a big uh, play in the manufacturing or the automotive sector or anywhere anywhere you go experiences will change with iot um, driven uh, industries right so they will be able to act it so edge is going to grow edge is going edge computing will be the one of the major things which will happen so just to, just to get into right it is predictive enterprise it is uh, if i want to become a predictive enterprise what are the characteristics right it is so you you should start asking questions and getting answers that means self service data blending so that means it is i just have to ask questions that my business i don't have to depend upon my technology guy to collect data process it and everything 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 of that sort right it is it has to happen in the background automatically and i wish i should be able to ask questions and this is already tools are there it's uh, it's just ask questions you will get the answers right and real time analytics is going to be the standard and that is one another peculiar characteristics of a enterprise and machine learning right it is not that it's going to be one model i create and i keep on doing it that model should start learning from the data which is uh, been um, uh, there in the in the system and the new data which is going to come into the system okay so i just want to give you a perspective to different industries different use cases right uh, which uses data and produce um, produce uh, outputs or analytics out of it as n number of use cases it is a very very horizontal um, platform data analytics or the which is actually so we, these kind of use cases every industry is looking at right if you look at it customer i just give you a perspective of customer 360 right in, in a banking scenario Right. I am I am I am in a I'm a bank customer. Customer, the bank can understand what are my transactions are right. How am I? Uh, what is my personal transactions? How much salary I get? I how, what kind of expenses I have? Right. It actually look at it. And am I making any relationship with an airline? Right? Am I making a traveling uh, to different countries? Am I making transactions outside of the country? Right. Um, so whether I have a loan account, whether I have a credit card, um, whether I have investment, if you start merging all these things, right? And even today, if, if I if I start merging just uh, my information, they will be able to get a lot of information. 
And if you think about, okay, my wife has an account in the same account, my dad has and my mother has an account. So if the moment they start merging my address, it is going to explode, right? They can actually sell or they can actually offer a completely different product like an investment product or a mutual fund or whatever, whatever right? it is. I'm able to, they are able to understand me better and provide me the right services, right? That is what, and even they will be able to understand that, okay, are you going to be a loan defaulter or not? By looking at your transactions and your um, out, outflow of money, I am able, the bank will tell that, okay, this guy is a high risk guy, so don't give him any, any kind of loan. Or even I can, they can tell my, my behavior, my posting in social media, my search patterns in the bank, right? They will be able to offer me a loan as well. If I am looking for a housing loan or not, they will even come uh, prepared right by looking at all this kind of data and come to me telling that okay this is you want this kind of a loan so this is this is what is happening i've just only touched on that one use case but if you really look at it cognitive uh, cognitive is another another thing right it is like uh, uh, facial recognition image analytics all is uh, is making it possible uh, to have different um, use cases so already government is doing a lot of um, surveillance on uh, on image analytics and this like that. So just to uh, give you a perspective of data analytics landscape, right? There's n number of tools today. There are infrastructure, there are analytics tools, there are industry-based, there are particularly on visualization, there are databases, there are data governance tools, right? For particularly full applications, for marketing, sales, human uh, capital, or even advertising, everywhere you will see a n number of tool sets using data, products, it's coming out. So open source is another major area which is actually contributing to this as well. So many enterprises are using this kind of products. Every new companies, every new startups, which is there's a huge number of startups comes in um, with resolution to data. Right. Even there is there is a if you really look at it, data sources API. If you look at the bottom of it, you will see data monetization is a major thing. Right. It is people sell data, so a huge amount of data is being sold, and even um, your information is being consumed by Google. Your behavior, your they sell data, Facebook sell data, everybody sell data. Right. All these large technology companies, they make a lot of revenue out of uh, the data which they store. Um, so that brings in uh, a, a clear concern for all of us, right? It is like, okay, what is this, what is the, what is the privacy policy, right? It is what kind of a privacy exists uh, in the world, right? Or what kind of a security exists in the world with all these technologies coming in, they're all consuming this, my data is getting consumed. Okay, what is that privacy, security, compliance norms, right? Who is accountable for it, right? What kind of an ownership exists? Who is owning it, right? So you all agree that, okay, there is the, the, the way the good things happens, there is a lot of bad things also happens, right? So, so how, is it, um, how is it affecting me or you and the, the people around, right? So you are, we all agree that today, if you, if, you, if, you, if you really look at it, right, Netflix can release a series, right, without even censorship. There is no need for a censorship in India, right, for Netflix to release a movie or even a series. So you are already seeing that there is a concerns getting raised on movie releases to an online platform, right? So people are just realizing, there is a government, are just realizing, obviously, Government is one of the one of the least uh, ones who will act on it than private institutions, right? So government will is looking into it now. Many of the governments have started looking into it and understanding. Oh, okay. So this is going to happen. This guy is selling my data or uh, in on even our countrymen's data. And I'm sure you all have heard about the sprinkler um, story, which has happened in the last uh, couple of months in Kerala. Right? So why is people worried about it? Right? So the people are worried about because they have every personal information, personally identified PII is one of the major 
uh, thing happens in the in the computing world personally identified information is being transmitted right and been used by and used and abused so that is the reason it has came up as one of the major uh, issues right so there are regulations uh, in the industry it is only again it is all just coming up um, gdpr is a consumer data protection regulation which exists in europe right if, if you are actually doing business with europe or with your using data of consumer data of uh, europe citizens you have to have GDPR guidelines. There is a guideline which is being published and compliance. There are audits compliance uh, on that. HIPAA is again on health insurance and profitability. Uh, it is again the health information of different citizens of different world, right? How that has to be handled. There are different different norms in it. <coughs> PCI is again, again, um, you all store credit card or bank account details in uh, in online websites. Right. There are there is a set of standard and regulation they are supposed to follow that companies are supposed to follow to store those information because you hear a lot about fraud happening on uh, as well as on the data uh, stuff. Right. Uh, SOX is another thing. It is um, Cyber Oxley Act which just came up because because of accounting fraud. It is again how the accounting data needs to be processed and consumed. That is SOX. Uh, CCCPA the uh, CC. PA California one, it is just recent one, it is just came up, came out in 2019 um, about this act, which is again similar to GDPR, it, it, it is for the US customers. How you can who we use data for the, uh, from, the, from the US citizens, so that is CCPA. So this is another major emerging area, but it is again, it is being used and abused by industries. So, um, there are there are rules and I'll just touch upon some of the things for which you can look forward um, in a, in an evolving job and designation right it is it's just a, I'm just trying to list out uh, data based uh, roles like data engineer data analyst data miner data scientist right it is all those those are the roles which is exist in a data and analytics world this is just a just a sample um, because it is it is it has been again this is again it is evolving area so you people are very creative in uh, creating designations and at the end of the day somebody who can um, collect process right and uh, make sense out of the data uh, they call us we call them as data engineer or a data analyst right so this is the data role then the, the similar thing which i was talking about the privacy and compliance there is a regulations and um, because many of the ISO uh, standards is there as well for uh, many companies to get certified that okay you are a secure company who can actually uh, handle my data right when I deal with any of the uh, different large customers they always ask okay are you certified in this particular ISO standards ISO 27001 is one standard which is always been considered as as information security, you handle your information as well as the data very, uh, very, very religiously. So that is why. Um, so there are there are roles or uh, the enterprises look for information security specialists. Then there is network security specialist, which is to making the network protective. Right? You also hear a lot about um, hacking and things like that. Right? So there is a network security specialist, data and privacy compliance specialist. Okay, what kind of a data can be stored where? Right. So there are health insurance, health health data. You cannot. There are countries which tell that okay, you cannot store anywhere other than in my country. So that means if you don't have a cloud server sitting in that particular country, they cannot do business, or they have to either enable local data uh, storage in that countries. So there is data privacy and compliance specialist roles, which which is also emerging. So this is the major stuff. So um, I have a video. I know that it is almost one hour um, to go. One hour already over and five minutes over the hour. Um, if uh, so this is a practical application, it just came into my WhatsApp recently. Not too sure whether you have seen it. Uh, this is a little practical applications in an agriculture um, scenario, right? Um, happening using uh, IoT, data, cloud, everything. So it actually shows you uh, how this is 
this is evolving, right? It is already in practical scenario. You can actually see um, how robotics is uh, implemented, how the um, IoT things are implemented, how the data and analytics is implemented. So that comes to, to the end of my uh, session, right? Any Anybody who actually makes use of the strategic asset as the data and come out with a value and uh, if they can meet the business objective, they will be the, the most uh, successful uh, enterprises um, going to be. So um, that is what the session all I wanted to present to you. So um, thank you very much. If you have questions, I can ask, um, answer that as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we will go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, right. please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your Zoom control panel. Yes, uh, can you see the question, sir? Yeah, there is a question on us. We know um, there are a lot of forgery are happening in this area. How can we stay safe in this new era? See, it is, uh, and then one more question is, with respect to the business analytics, what are the main challenges and the issues of data analytics typically come across while getting business insights from a messy, complex data? Okay, so um, maybe just ask you on the, uh, just you answer on the, the first one, that is, um, a lot of forgery happens, right? Staying safe is um, uh, to making sure that there is there is a lot of security aspect, right? If um, I'm sure it is, you are you will get SMSs from your um, your own banks and telling that okay, don't disclose your pen and things like that, right? Make sure that if you are actually publicly making any anything available about you or to anybody, right? Make sure that it is. It is. It cannot be uh, forced, or um, it it cannot be it cannot be used in such a way that okay, it is. It cannot be used against you, right? There are information which has to be classified as confidential, 
right? And that has to be kept confidential. So um, uh, people will use it. So if the more the public information you provide, that more forgery is going to happen. So um, it, is, it is always stay limited in your public profile, right? And verify every time, right? If something is coming to you as an SMS, if it is everything, right? Even, even from a link which you are actually clicking, right? Make sure that it is a secure thing. Right? So it is the knowledge and awareness, right? Uh, of what is possible, what is not possible, right? That is what it is, make you um, keep secure, uh, means make you secure in the, in the, in the, in the space of data. So, um, um, I, I cannot tell you exactly, okay, what will make you safe. So, um, uh, keep your confidential data intact within yourself, right? Don't need, and even today, right? Even my daughter, when she goes into online, I can see, um, um I can see a camera is being actually being, um, sticked with a cello tape with a paper, right? So, it, anybody can actually hack um, your information. So we are living in a world where it is very publicly and it is very connected. So, so staying safe is the best option for anybody, right? Stay safe in the sense that it's like, don't make uh, unnecessary mistakes. Okay? If your camera is on, make sure that camera is off all the time, right? So don't get into that. Then don't publicly uh, create all kind of uh, things in the in the public. You cannot even share, right? It is uh, people actually go and post it. They say, oh, I am going to this place and I am going to that place and everything of that sort, right? It is so. It is actually giving information. Somebody is sitting and watching you, and that oh, okay, this person is going to be there, so I should target there, or I should target their house because there somebody is going to go out. So um, your personally identified information is your property. Nobody will ask you until unless it is very very secure network. I'm not too sure whether it is engineer or it is answering your question, but it is an individual responsibility knowing what to be given. And if you are if you are going and making it public, and then somebody using it, nobody can actually be um, to be blamed. It is ourself, right? And uh, with respect to the business analytics, what are the main challenges in the? Yeah, obviously, it is the main challenge in the in the world is in the messy and complex data. It is cleaning it and consuming it is a major challenge because uh, one of the things is that um, major challenge in it in, in natural language or any kind of see on a structured data place it is okay because you are if your account number you know that okay it is it is seven digit or ten digit your phone number is ten digit those kind of data is structured that is okay but in a messy scenario or in an IoT scenario there may be n number of sensor data which is coming in or it can be text right. Cleaning those data is a, one of the major challenges. That is where natural language processings are coming up. There is a lot of uh, technologies are evolving in, but still we don't have the right um, solutions coming up in the, in the cleaning of the data. There is still a lot of effort has been done. And uh, that is where the major challenges is. And once it is, once it is cleaned up, then it is okay. So then it can be stored very, very properly. So the um, the challenges are in the in the in the cleaning up of data. That is what I would I would say. And uh, how efficient are data visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI, business operations, and how do we utilize most of the applications? Power BI and uh, Tableau are going. They are giving visualizations aspects. They are also giving a bit of analytics um, in in the in the world today, and it is being applied very well by the industries today. Uh, right. It also gives you a visualization opportunity of analytical models and different things. So this is one of the major things which is we use Tableau and Power BI are one of the major um, things which uh, in many enterprises uses use it for reporting and visualization perspective. Um, since we are a consumer and very much keen on security or privacy concern, is the rule, regulation, and standard being updated or monitored based on emerging and evolving technologies? Um, it is monitored because the, the way I was telling it is there is only minimal standards and minimal uh, regulations are coming out. Um, it will it will evolve. There will be more more and more regulations will come in, right? But every company, right? At the end of the day, how ethical you are, how um, transparent you are, how accountable you are, 
somebody who is dealing with um, those data also needs to be um, in that uh, mode, right? There are um, there are value systems which every company implement in their own enterprises, but um, some companies use it for their own benefit, right? That is, it is the scenario. It is the same scenario in anywhere in the world. So somebody will use it wisely. Somebody will use it very ethically, right? Somebody will use it for their own benefit. So um, there is regulations and rules there, which is at least for the time being, there are some uh, there, but um, it is going to evolve. Um, uh, it, on evolving technologies, Yes, evolving. See, any technologist or anybody who is coming out with any any new platforms or anything, everybody is trying to make uh, um, money out of it or value out of it, right? So it is not that one organization can just like that regulate it. So it has to be regulated uh, in a central place like a government organization or a country or somebody like that, right? So that is only will regulate. The, the regulations and the enforcement should happen from a non-biased agency, then only it will it will work. Uh, anything else? I think it is that's uh, questions I have. Is there anything else? Yes, sir. There is one question from Muhammad Jasir. Okay, um, Punus, since we're consumer. Now, I, I just told about that consumer very much keen on security, privacy concern, the rule regulations, standard, right? It is, there's what? It is, it has to be controlled from a central agency. Um, it is one particular uh, company uh, or somebody is coming out with it, Menot, right? And uh, I think Punus is asking, are there regulations like HIPAA exclusively for India? No, um, there is nothing on India since bank details and other credit card details are getting leaked. Yes, it is getting leaked. Uh, I'm not too sure whether, I'm, I'm sure Bonus, you also might be aware um, that it is, it is just one year or two years back. It is, um, if, you, if you have your um, uh, entire election, um, election card data was available in public, you just have to give um, your, your which area you wanted to get the data from, right? So India is a soft target for many companies today. Uh, India is a target for data uh, exploitation. Um, definitely, uh, I have not seen anything which, because I'm, I don't deal much with the, with the Indian customers uh, here, but I have not seen anything which is uh, happening. Everybody tells that, right? It is even, even um, our, um, this, this issue which has came in, uh, sprinkler issue which has came in, um, there, there was, it was just a, a small uh, statement of NDA, right? Non-disclosure -disc agreement, nothing else. There is nobody reviewed it, nothing. I, I'm not politically correct, uh, correct to explain anything here, but um, India is a soft target. Indian data is uh, definitely there. Um, and even this itself, right? The Zoom, which you are actually having this call, Right, it is got into, a, got into a controversy just one month or two months back. Right, it is many organizations are not even using Zoom today um, because of uh, the privacy issue. Right, uh, many organizations are banned. Even I'm, um, uh, our organization is also banned um, using Zoom uh, because of the privacy concern. Anything else? Yes, uh, there is three questions from Muhammad Jasir. Can you see? Uh, is it the same thing is coming or? No, it's the same thing as data, Power BI, I'm seeing yeah. business analytics. Let's see, Congress data the same, sincere consumer. I have answered all the stuff. Okay, 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 thank you, sir. Uh, I think we have covered all our questions. I know that it's, uh, it's already time up. It's already 20 minutes out of our scheduled time. Um, there's a lot no problem, of things. No, no problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> All right. It was highly informative. Yeah. 
yeah adra i can proceed okay 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 thank you sir uh, it looks like we have covered all our questions uh, on behalf of universal engineering college i would like to express our profound gratitude to the presenter of our fifth day webinar series mr jean matthew thank you very much for making the webinar with our participants a really successful one we greatly appreciate the presentation you gave to us it was nothing short of incredibly informative and interesting thank you sir and i also express our sincere gratitude to our principal dr joski jacob and i am happy to express word of thank thanks to our staff members who have made this seminar a grand success now i would like to request you all to fill the feedback form that we have sent in your mail it will be considered as your attendance sheet and we will be sending you the e certificate of this session within two working days who have attended our webinar now i would like to inform you that we will have a one day webinar session on 20th june 2020 that means the next saturday uh, we will have dr sahit cholil on the topic artificial intelligence ir 4.0 future job and career the registration uh, link will be sent to your mail or it will be available in the official facebook site of universal engineering college we will be, we will be providing e certificate to this session, uh, to this one day session hope all of you will join there once again thank you everyone for making our webinar a grand success stay safe stay healthy thank you very much Bye. thank you thank you jinta thank you thank you very much